What's going on everybody? Will Hamilton here and uh, welcome to another Facebook Live. This thing's pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty good format so uh, looking forward to, to chatting about, uh, about pushers today. Now in the last Facebook Live that I did we were talking about how pushers like to use a play against you called trench warfare. So if you haven't gotten this document yet, I don't think it's on this video. Maybe we'll put it on later, but it's somewhere in the Facebook group. You can nav around and get it, download that, because this is the four ways that Hero can stress villain. You can stretch them wide, you can push them back, you can pull them in, and then the one we don't have listed here is you could push them back uh, as well. So in the last video, I asked people to kind of brainstorm how they, using that framework, using this framework, would go ahead and beat a, uh, a pusher. There are a couple, couple of folks I want to highlight. Uh, thank you everybody who participated. Um, there's a couple folks um, I wanted to highlight. And, um, and the first, actually before we even get to the first, which is David Wan, uh, who posted on the last video. Wait for it. There we go. Um, so a pusher's, a pusher's favorite play is this play called Trench Warfare. And so a pusher, appropriately uh, named, tries to push you back. Um, they'll get in their trench back here. You'll get in your trench back here. And then that makes it very difficult to advance forward into no man's land. And for you, down here as hero, it means you basically can hit through the court, but it's very hard to hit off the court, and it's very hard to pull villain in. So by pushing you back, by using trench warfare, uh, the pusher reduces the amount of court they have to cover. They're going to get to everything that you're hitting. It's hard for you to use pace to hurt them because you've already, they've already like sort of self-pushed themselves back. So a hard shot which is designed to push or a high shot which is designed to push isn't going to hurt them. But at the same time, they use a high trajectory moon ball to push you back and it's really difficult to advance forward uh, once you're in that situation. So what David said was he said, if you're serving and have the ability to stretch or push uh, the villain immediately, you can use a slice or a kick wide that gets them off balance. So what he's recommending here on the, um, uh, on the deuce court would be a stretch serve that pulls them off the court. And as a righty, that would probably be a slice. And then if it was on the ad court, it would be uh, probably a kick serve that would kick off like that. But in either case, that would be a stretch. And so you would get them off the court and then you have an opportunity to either stretch to the other side or you have an opportunity to pull them in. And what David goes on to say, uh, and the reason you would, once you stretch them off the court, you would either pull them in or stretch them wide is because when you're both in the trenches back here, it's difficult to orchestrate something. So you have to hang on, you have to hang with them. In other words, you have to rally with them and wait for a neutral opportunity. So David's exactly right. The goal against a pusher is to not let them get to trench warfare because once you're here, it's really hard to get out of this situation. There's another comment. Uh, let me actually just nab into, let's see if it's in the group here and if I can find it. Because I posed a question about what, uh, uh, yeah, Noel said, be patient. Um, should you be patient or should you go for the earth, uh, first opportunity to end the point? So when you're in a situation like this, it is difficult to end the point with one swing. It's a sort of a multi-tiered process where you first have to establish better core position, which can be hard, then stretch them or pull them in and get them out of, out of their trench. So the goal is just to simply not even get here. David goes on to say in his post, and you can see it if you look at the old video, he says when they're serving... So keep in mind, when they're serving, this would be a good time to actually push at the pusher. And this is what David suggested, because the pusher is not yet back in their trench, right? They would serve and they would try and retreat, but you have an opportunity with a, a, a good shot, a push right at them to catch them while they're backing up, and then they're likely to give you a short ball where you can stretch, you can pull them in, you can do something else. So that was another great suggestion from David. And then... Uh, here we go. I asked, so Marco... After the last video, he was looking at this thing, and he said, yesterday I played a singles match against a pusher. He won the first set 6-0, which is awesome. He relaxed, lost the second 6-4, but then he refocused, and he won the, uh, the third set 6-4. Uh, 
and he talked about how he wasn't going to, he didn't retreat into his trenches like he used to. He said he definitely, he said, uh, if I had waited for the ball and the trajectory of the ball, I would have lost for sure. And he said the sheet really helped out the directional thing. But one of the things he used uh, that I want to share right now is that when he moved forward to hit a volley, he, uh, he played what he referred to as dead volleys bouncing in the service box. The way I would frame it is he used a pull. So he was saying his volleys landed here and didn't penetrate the court. And that's what you're looking for when you come to net against a pusher. If you come in and they're way back here, what they're expecting you to do is try and hit a good deep volley, but then they're already positioned for it, and then they can hit a good lob. They can beat you at the lob. So from back here, it actually makes more sense to pull them in. And this can be a great option, particularly if your volleys aren't the most precise volleys where the stretch on either side might start playing with the single sideline and you might miss a couple balls um, and you don't have quite have the touch to, to control them, is actually just go for a pull kind of down the middle. Maybe at the, the shield would probably be recommended because players tend to have less control off the shield side. So that is an excellent uh, uh, option for you when, uh, when uh, you uh, come to net. Uh, Max asks in chat, any, any tips for recovering from a torn ACL? Man, I'm sorry about that. I do not, uh, uh, I do my, I'm still waiting on my medical degree, but, uh, sorry, you're hurt, man. Wish you a speedy recovery. Uh, Matt Jazz, what's up? Uh, uh, Marsha, can't get the sound going. Sorry about that. Um, but, uh, one thing I want to mention now that we've, uh, we've addressed the pushers. So these Facebook lives are pretty cool. Uh, we're going to do a watch party for the Wimbledon final. So that'll be East Coast time. That's going to be New York time. That'll be 9 a.m. on Sunday. So we'll have the board ready to go. We'll be hanging out for the entire match, even if it goes five sets. We will be here. It's looking like Fed versus Rafa right now. Uh, Adam, you've been watching much of the tournament. Both those guys are looking pretty sharp. Uh, very little. Very, very little. Yeah. Well, um, Rafa's got to play Del Potro tomorrow, though. That could be interesting. Del Potro's tough. But it's looking, it's looking like 10 years later, it might be Fed Rafa again at, at Wimbledon, one, one more hurrah. So that'll be, uh, that'll be a heck of a match because um, that's a situation where you have, if Rafa's down here, you got the sword over here, as we all know, and you got the shield over here. So it's, it's that interesting matchup where the sword versus shields um, aren't, in the, aren't in the normal configuration. So it leads to some interesting points. Um, Max, well, yeah, you're welcome, dude. Hope, uh, like I said, hope, wish you have a speedy recovery, man. We'll get you back on court soon. But, uh, but for now, you have to deal with, with looking at my ugly mug uh, with these Facebook Lives. Uh, Elizabeth, what's going on? Um, should you take the ball early um, against the pusher? So I think the question here, should you take the ball early? It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to take the ball early so you can rip it or something, or you think you're taking time away, then it might not necessarily be the right move. If they're already back here, right? And let's say you're in your trench and you're trying to move forward. Are you taking taking the ball early, but you're trying to push them back when they're already back here? That's not, you know, that's, that's probably taking too much risk for a play that's not going to be super effective. So I think the, the question I would ask instead is how can you uh, stretch them to one side or pull them in. And if taking the ball early is part of that process, then cool. Um, I might just wait for them. You know, the good thing about a pusher, pusher is they don't have a ton of control. So I might wait for them to leave the ball a little bit shorter and then see if you can stretch them off the court. And then it might be, a, you know, if they're way over here, yeah, then you might take it early because you want to cut off their time and stretch them to the other side. So that would be a good opportunity. But um, if, they're, if they're already set up back in their trench, I don't see a ton of benefit to trying to take the ball on the rise, take it early, you might miss more of them when uh, you might not get a ton of benefit from that move. So I think you'd have to value what you're trying to do. Like, how are you trying to stress villain? Uh, Kyle, what's up? Um, you just can't slice it your forehand. You know, so, so uh, let me, let's see. Uh, I play a pusher who gives me a ball I'm not comfortable with, particularly in the midcourt ball with very little pace. I tend to send it long and it starts getting into your head. Yeah, so it sounds like you're, you're uh, overhitting 
on, on that shot. And, you know, most pushers, if this is a true pusher, they are not going to hurt you very much. So if the ball is, sh is short, let me see, are they slicing it to you? Very little pace. Okay, so there'd be a question of how high the ball sits up is an important one. So they're back here. If it's a high ball that sits up, you can probably pull them off the court. So I wouldn't try and rip it. I would just try and pull them off the court. And then I would come to net and see what happens, see if they lob you. Um, if you're not, so as a, as a, as a, I'm assuming you're right-handed. If you get a short ball, I would probably run around and use your sword, assuming your forehand's your best shot, send it over here to their shield, and then I would play most of the court in a lob off of your, uh, off your normal overhead, off your, off your sword. If you approach this way, which sometimes is easier because you're pulling it as a righty to go over here, the danger is they might lob over your shield shoulder and that's a hard overhead. So I would probably run around and drive it this way, not expecting a passing shot that's gonna be any good and see how that works for you. But make sure you don't, you don't overcook. That's obviously harder, easier said than done. It's very typical, people try and hit hard, but you know, the no, they're so far back, people are like, man, I gotta hit this really hard to get it by them. So don't even bother, stretch them, right? If they're back here, they've already pushed themselves back, stretch them off the court instead. Another thing, if the ball's a little bit lower, particularly if it's on your shield, here, and you have the slice over here, I would, I would pull them in. I would hit a short, low slice down the middle. I refer to this as the newt, which uh, I, I got taught, uh, Martina Navratilova taught us that one. She, uh, she, she normally hits it as a volley, but we just call it the newt. It's a short, low slice down the middle, no pace, angle it over to the shield because it typically is harder for people to, they have less topspin off this side. So that's gonna be more effective. Uh, where they're not going to be able to get it up and down and you'll get a higher volley that you can hit down. Once you're able to pull a pusher or anybody in, then you can push right at them. Then you can go at them because they're not in a position from a court positioning standpoint to defend against the push. When they're back here, they can defend against hard stuff and stuff hit right at them. When they're here, they can't. You just go right at them, try and keep it low, try and hit it, try and hit it down at their feet and you're going to win that point. So that would be, those are, Kyle, those would be the two things uh, I would try. I would either try and stretch them off the court, particularly if the ball's a little bit higher on your sword, and if it's lower, then you can use a slice instead, and uh, that'll keep your slice lower. You can pull them in and then be set up for uh, an easy volley to put away. So those are, thank you again for everybody that commented on the last video. Congrats again, Marco, for using this stuff. Get a hold of this thing if you don't have it already. This is really gonna help you uh, look at tennis in a new way and, uh, uh, kind of construct plays that allow you to attack attack your opponents in a way you might not have um, thought of before. So recap, Sunday, watch party at 9 a.m. Ooh, it's early, man. It's early. Uh, watch party, 9 a.m. for the Wimbledon final. Hoping, fingers crossed, Fed Nadal. And i uh, going to post another video in a second uh, with uh, some of my match play. I make I, It's a point I lose. Uh, I make a mistake, so it's going to be another quiz. You can see if you can figure out the mistake I make in the point to, uh, that causes me to lose it. Uh, one, Kyle just chimed in one more time. So, Also played a pusher a few months ago. Did my typical serve and volley game. Nice, I like it. Serve and volley is awesome. Uh, and that worked initially. Initially, you started missing. And I remember your tactic of starting to bring them in. Ended up being too late, uh, but it worked for four games. Uh, so, I'm, so it sounds like you were already down in the last set, but it started working again, so that's good. One thing you can try if you're serving and volleying earlier, I do it in the, in the uh, ad court a ton because I'm a lefty, so I hook people off the court. It really works when you get, obviously, higher returns, but if they start f hitting good passing shots, let's say, like for me, when people start hitting passing shots, they typically come over here because it's kind of hard to, on a lefty slice to really angle it cross court. So a lot of times people come down the line, particularly when they've been stretched off the court, they can now hit into the court. I'll start, uh, I'll start with a certain volley. If I get beat a couple times, I'll fake it then and then just sit on that and then hit to the open court. So this is a concept we refer to as play stacking. So when you build a playbook, you're gonna have you know a bunch of plays in this thing. And what you'll start to do is order how you use them when you play a match. So in the ad court, I always start serve and volley. And I will do it over and over and over and over and over again, particularly with my lefty spin that will win me free points and give me weaker returns earlier in a match. 
And then typically you're playing somebody good, they'll start to figure it out. They might start sitting on this, whatever. And if you get start to get beat here, you should already have how people try and defend your primary play, have that planned out, have the, the secondary play that you are gonna use. So my secondary play is what I just described, is when they start coming down here, hitting into the court, right? Again, they're off the court, they hit into the court. My secondary play is to fake it and then sit on that and then put the ball over here. And a lot of times I'll come in behind that because you know, I've stretched them to the other side and now they're on the dead run. And what I'll often do is I'll use, because I'm a, this is my shield, so it's my backhand, I'll hit a short low slice a pull over here so with a with a righty for the shield for the sword a lot of people have more extreme grips because they hit with topspin they like the ball high in the strike zone this ball stays low so it forces people to hit up and then i'm here it's an easy volley that i can put away so that's a that's a concept we're not going to talk a ton about right now but play stacking is sort of you know how people are like, man, I was doing this thing, it was working great, and then suddenly like, that my opponent adjusted and it stopped working. I won the first set, and then they, what I was doing didn't work anymore, and it was, then I lost, and I didn't know what to do. So the solution to that, again, is to have that, those, you know, the play stacking, right? Just You have your thing, then you have your adjustment, then you have your adjustment, and that way you always stay uh, one step ahead. So a little bit of a higher, higher, more advanced tactic we could talk about some other time. And uh, Catherine asks, should a ready serve and volley in the deuce court um, as well? Yeah, I mean, you totally can. I, I do it, I do it in, the, uh, in the deuce court also. I mean, I'm, I'm a lefty, but I'll use a kick serve. So it'll kick that way. So it'll actually be a stretch at the sword. Higher risk play, um, it can work really well. Typically earlier in a match, again, when people aren't quite dialed into my serve. But if you leave your serve hanging, in my case, I'll get killed because the ball sits up and then you know, they'll, they'll be able to take a big rip at it. But if you've got that serve, sure, I would totally go for it. And, you know, they're way off the court. The advantage of it, of doing it over here, if you got a serve that can stress their sword, is your next volley's at their shield and they're on the dead run. So you've used your serve to set up an opening where they have to hit a backhand on the run and, and pass you, right? You hit, a, you hit a ball over here and then you position yourself there. they got to hit a passing shot on the dead run on their shield. That's like one of the hardest shots, if not the hardest shot to pull off. So um, totally can do it. Uh, doesn't have to be wide, could be down the tee as well. It just, it, it honestly depends on your game. You know, what you're capable of doing, the strengths and weaknesses you have, and obviously the matchup against your opponent. So those are all the ingredients you, you need to consider. But uh, I would just, I, you know, Catherine, if you're trying to figure it out, I would pick like the play you, Pick the serve and volley play in the, ad, in the deuce court you like the most and just do it and see what happens, right? Both in terms of, oh, this is working or, oh, this didn't work, but why didn't it work? You know, because they beat me down the line or they stretch cross court or whatever. And then maybe it started working, but maybe they adjusted. And if they adjusted, what was that adjustment? When you start kind of filing away that information, then you're able to start, um, uh, building your playbook and, and stacking these plays so that you always know what to do based on the adjustments somebody uh, somebody makes. Um, so with that in mind, Benjamin, what's up, man? Good to see you. Even even if you joined late, you know this, these things we can replay them. Modern technology. Um, all right. Well, I think that's good. Uh, I think that's good for for today. But we will be back. What's today, Adam? Tuesday. Today's yes, Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> we'll probably be back Wednesday. Uh, nope, not Wednesday. Just kidding. We'll probably be back on Thursday. And then again, there's that watch party on Sunday. I'll send an email out about it. I'll post it in the group as well. Um, Matt Jazz asked the question, Kyle, you're welcome, man. If you're in the trench, should you use a drop shot? Probably not. You're too far back to make this effective because the ball is going to sit up and against most, you know, I don't know about the pusher in terms of how big their shots are, but most players would be able to close on this in plenty of time and, Put the ball away. So that's that's not a great play. That's why that's why pushers are so tough. You get pushed back into a trench, and really all you can do is push back. So it's hard to work your way out of that. But the the drop shot from way back there is not is not going to be particularly effective. Uh, Wimbledon prediction. Uh, Max asked, man, I, I think you got to give it to Fed at the moment. Um, but fanboy. I mean, who isn't <laughs> who isn't a Federer fanboy? Uh, I would probably say Fed, Fed, and then uh, and then Nadal, and then the, uh, the the third place person would be Del Potro. But we'll find out who comes out of the Nadal Del Potro thing tomorrow. I think on the women's side, Serena, uh, greatest of all time. So 
Don't see any reason she shouldn't be the favorite at this point. She's looking pretty tough. And, uh, and certainly has the, uh, you know, if she's serving well, it's, it's game over. So, all right. Well, thanks again, everybody who showed up live. Thanks again, everybody who watched uh, after the fact. But uh, looking forward to doing another one of these soon. And we'll see everybody soon. Later.